The crafting mechanics in Nightingale are massive. Easily one of, if not the best systems I've seen in a survival genre, which is something to really look forward to and also fully understand if you want to get the most out of your build and be ready for the next challenge. So guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Foriam and in today's ultimate crafting guide, I'm going to share everything you want to know so you can craft top tier weapons, tools and armor to become the apex predator in Nightingale. Start dealing insane amounts of damage, take out bosses in no time, dramatically increase your survivability and carry all the resources you come across during your realm walking adventures. This complete guide filled with tips and tricks will give an answer to all your questions. So what are we waiting for? Let's get right to it. I want to give a quick shout out to Inflection Games, the studio behind Nightingale, for making this video possible. When they asked me to make a couple of guides for the game, I instantly said yes, because man, I'm having a blast so far, like 80 hours in already. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out and pick up Nightingale with my link in the description down below. There is so much to talk about, so let's get straight down to business. All right, so here we are inside a beautiful forest and Tecarian realm, in which you can already find plenty of different resources of all qualities. So let me quickly show you the importance of always searching for the rarest resources you can come across in the world. This is already where we can find all sorts of trees with different colors, which also determine the quality of the resources when you chop them down. So for this one, we don't need a certain level to take it out which also drops regular bundles of wood. So if we pick these up, they won't have any special effects. Be sure to always remove the tree stumps as well for some bonus resource. But now if we move on to the next trees, this one requires an axe with a gear score level 10, while this one right here requires level 40. This wood right here is tier 1, so if we pick that up, it's going to be slightly more powerful. And right here we have tier 2 forest wood. So this is the regular wood we picked up first without any bonuses, while the tier 1 wood actually comes with plus 10% strength bonus and some blocking efficiency, while the secondary tier comes with even better stats. So it is very important to always keep an eye out for those different colored resources as these are much more valuable and can turn your crafts into very powerful gear. Sweet, we also picked up some ingots right here with a range rating in stamina efficiency, while some ores which I picked up earlier come with melee damage, blocking efficiency and bonus durability. So you can tell that when you convert zinc ores into ingots, these are actually going to become pretty interesting for melee weapons. While the etched ingot of shimmering ore can be pretty useful for crafting pistols, as these rely on a nice amount of range rating. And the same counts for hunting animals. If we take out these little piggies in my abeyance realm, you can see that they drop some basic tier 1 pelts. Now though, let's also check out a desert gloom realm, a place with much more dangerous foes. They are not only more powerful, but also give better rewards when taken out. Ah, sweet. Seems like we've got a pretty decent pack right here, which we can take out one by one with our exquisite rifle. Man, I absolutely love the headshots in Nine Gale. It's super satisfying. So we got our hands on some tier 1 prey meat with 25 maximum HP, while if we look at the tier 2, this actually comes with much better stats. The same counts for the pelts, with more maximum HP, better regen, stamina efficiency, etc. If we now visit the tanning station and make ourselves some leather, we can always use the autofill feature to place the best resource inside. But important, be sure to always choose the specific item with the bonuses you want to have for either the weapon or type of armor you like to craft. For showcase purposes, I'm going to craft one letter of both a tier 1 prey and a tier 2 predator. So let's bring these resources to the workbench and craft ourselves two Shaspot rifles of different tiers, for which we're going to need that letter, a stock, an action and also a barrel. So let's also craft two different stocks, one of regular wood without any bonuses and also one of tier 3 desert wood, which are going to make this ranged weapon deal so much more damage. Let's also check out my ingots, as these can also have a huge impact on the damage output or efficiency of your gear. If we look at this brass ingot, for example, it comes with magic power, blocking efficiency and poison resistance, which isn't all too great in my opinion. Well, right here we have one with stealth rating, movement speed and critical strike damage, which can be nice to use for your boots or for a sneaking build, let's say. 
This Magnesium Igit comes with 15% ranged damage and 20% range rating. So that's actually an amazing one to use for a rifle. While my hands down favorites are the Pursuit Ingots because these come with critical strike damage and 25% range damage. But check this ingot out right here, plus 20% melee damage, which could be amazing to use for felling axes. For the rifle barrel, we're gonna need shafts. So let's make a shimmering shaft and also a pursuit shaft. While right now, we also wanna have an action, so let's craft that as well. So if we throw in all the lower quality resources, you can see that the result will be a item level 46 Shazpot rifle, shimmering, with a range rating of 140, 250 range damage, some strength, etc. So let's first craft this one, while right now we have enough resources to make another one, which actually comes with much better stats. Item level 52 with 110 range rating, almost 400 damage, almost four times critical damage. So let's make this one as well. And now comes the interesting part, ladies and gentlemen. So let me quickly get outside and show you a pretty unique thing in Nightingale when crafting your gear. So I just unequipped my level 122 Shazpot rifle with over 1000 damage. I'm going to show you in a second how we can crank it up this much. But here we go. We now have the Pursuit with level 52 and the Shimmering with 46. So this is what the Pursuit rifle looks like because of the green bluish ingots. While well, if we switch to the Shimmering, check it out. This one is actually silver. This is also why my pistol is currently blue. My axe and my pickaxe are gray. And I think my sickles also come with a different color. There you go, silver. But this all depends on the type of ore you use when crafting your tools and weapons. Anyways, right now I think it becomes very clear what the difference already is damage-wise between the Shimmering Ore and the Pursuit Ore. The difference will become even bigger though once you start upgrading your gear. Before you can start upgrading your gear though, you first want to collect a nice amount of Essence, which is the same resource required to purchase blueprints from Essence Traders, but these can be found in all different tiers. Tier 1 Essence can be found in lower difficulty realms. All the more you progress and fight your way to the late game, the higher the tier of essence will be. My hands down favorite places to quickly pick up some essence are the Bastilles of Intellect and Agility, as these puzzles are pretty small, already give you a nice amount of essence, while if you want to go for the big reward, I definitely recommend you to complete Fate Towers in each realm you come across, as these have different floors with multiple rewards. So if we throw in the lower quality Shazpot rifle into the upgrade bench, we will turn it from common into uncommon, which already increases the damage by a nice amount. 450 with 66 item level. While if we do the same with a pursuit chestpot rifle, the damage difference is going to be even greater. Check it out. Almost 700 right now compared to the 450. And the crazy thing is you can upgrade your items multiple times. So it is very important you always focus on farming the best resources in the game because this can have a dramatic difference in both efficiency of your tools and damage output of your weapons. On top of that, the cherry and the pie, you can also add effusions to your gear. For example, this conveyance effusion increases your ranged damage. Depending on the tier essence which you use for this craft, it becomes even more powerful. So we just crafted one with tier one essence as well as one with tier two. So now after two upgrades and adding an infusion, this one with less than 400 damage originally now comes with over 700, while the one crafted with Pursuit Ingots has over 1000, which is going to make your hunting game so much better. Especially if you visit a Realmic Transmuter and throw in a Duelist card, as these bad boys significantly increase your damage output while you will also take more damage yourself, which is probably one of my favorite cards as of today because it allows you to literally one-shot enemies. A pretty wild card to play, it will make boss encounters, snowballing through dungeons and vaults so much easier and trust me in general this is just a lot of fun when going on a hunting adventure. So now a little bonus, if you've crafted two of these bad boys, well, you can basically fire two shots in a row before you have to start reloading. Of course, you're gonna have to sit through double the downtime, but yeah, if you have some space left in your action bar, I'm pretty sure this will help you with future hunting adventures. 
Anyways, it is very important you always keep your eyes open for those stats, as we just took out a couple insects, which actually come with some pretty nice stealth rating, more HP and more stamina. Your hands down top one priority when hunting for creatures in realms is to always focus on the wolf icon, which you can find on the map. This, in other words, is a legendary creature roaming the world, which will always drop higher value resources. They are pretty rare and some Sometimes difficult to take out, but trust me, it's worth the hunt as these can drop some of the best resources in the game. One of my absolute favorite upgrades on my character is my backpack, as I farmed for specific resources to increase its carry weight. Combined with a couple upgrades and an encumbrance infusion, this one comes with a maximum weight of 360, which is a lot more in comparison with what you start off in Nightingale. So very important, be sure to always save infusions for your future crafts, as these can make your crafts so much better. Alright, so there you have it, pretty much everything you need to know to be ready for crafting in Nightingale. Make yourself some top tier weapons to take out big boy targets in no time. Increase your survival capabilities and carry all the resources you come across during your realm walking adventures. If you find this guide helpful, be sure to leave a like. You have no idea how much you help out the channel with it. And of course, also other people searching for a guide like this one. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe as a lot more is coming your way. And yes, if you have any questions, suggestions for future videos, always welcome to leave them in the comments down below. Anyways, that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. A big thanks for watching. A big thanks to Inflection Games as well for making this video possible. A link to Nightingale can be found in the description down below. Right now, though, it's 4am out. I want to wish you an amazing day. I'll check you in the next video or live stream. Peace.